Hey, everybody, and welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How are we doing? Huh. Good. Worn out. <laughs> we yeah. have played really hard this weekend. Oh, my goodness. We really, really have. <laughs> Probably a little harder than even maybe we should have, but... <laughs> What can I say? We've been floating the river, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which isn't maybe as easy as it sounds. <laughs> Not when we come, apparently. But <laughs> uh. we've had a ton of fun, and we're both just uh, sore and tired and ready to get back yeah. into true crime where we belong. <laughs> so much so, yes. I had a great time, but yes, I'm ready to... I'm back in my desk to be recording and doing my stuff, because yeah, that's yeah. where I want to be. Me too. Most Boy. definitely. But well, we did you it. guys. We can at least we did it and be proud of that. So We did do it. Yes. It was really fun. And we did mm -hmm. it. We're proud of ourselves. Well, and you guys. You only flipped your tube five times. I only flipped my tube five times. I mean, mm -hmm. it could have been six, but it wasn't. It was five. The reason it wasn't six is because my nephew knocked me off my tube to save me from <laughs> flipping it another time. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Story for another day, but mm -hmm. I did only flip it six times. Let's do that. <laughs> well, have we got a show for you? You may have heard that there was a document that came out of the Chandler, Arizona Police Department late last week mm -hmm. that has been uh a bombshell a nuclear bomb a i don't even know all of the above big, yeah big news all of the above because it outlines what they know about charles death uh -huh. and a whole lot of other stuff and there's stuff in here we did not know there is some clarification and there's some connecting of dots here yeah that uh is pretty amazing. So we want to go through this document with you. This is a synopsis. So this is what they wrote up. Basically, this is everything they know about the case. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some redacted things in this um, in this document, but if you know this case at all, then that redacted, a lot of that redacted stuff is like, <clears throat> well, we know who that is, you know? Yeah. There are some things that are like, I think whole conversations and things that they did not share mm -hmm. that are completely redacted. But, you know, even without them, I feel like we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we said last week uh, that we believed that with Charles being charged, it was going to get, or Charles, with Lori being charged in Charles's death, it was going to get really interesting to see who the other players were and what they knew. And <laughs> wow. That was some great foreshadowing because it was here it is. Yeah. yeah, here it is. So this document starts out basically outlining Charles's death. So mm -hmm. this was on 7-11-2019. So almost exactly two years ago, mm -hmm. three years ago, three years yeah. ago. It, um, so the police department was called at 8.32 a.m. Um, to Lori's house because there'd been a shooting. So the person who called said their name was Alex Cox and that he had shot his brother-in-law, Charles Vallow, in self-defense. So they say a homicide investigation took place. There's a little bit of save and face in this document that I'm yeah. like, eh, did it though. Um, they've caught up. They have definitely caught up, mm -hmm. but they did um, say that they did a homicide investigation and that they did interview all of the pertinent parties. Um, they did say that they processed the scene as well. So at the conclusion of that investigation, there was a concern because there was a potential bullet strike on the ground, excuse me, dear, near Charles Vallow's body. Now that could mean that Charles was on the ground when he was fired at. Not exactly self-defense. And we're going to get to that a little bit more. Um, there was also some concern about the timeline that was given 
and that it was probably not correct and that there was some dishonesty going on. But they did not feel like there was probable cause at that time to arrest anyone. So they didn't. Yeah. But then they learned some stuff, some stuff we all know as well, Mm -hmm. uh, about Charles and Lori's marital problems. And um, also they learned some more about Tylee and JJ. And they learned that, so Charles had kind of moved out and was in Texas staying with his sister. Um, but he was coming to town to visit on the on July 10th, mm-hmm. just the day before he died. Yeah. So when they start looking into their relationship, um, they find that Lori has accused Charles of infidelity, which we all know is ridiculous. Um, that, that's a really, you know, that's a classic piece of gaslighting, isn't it? Isn't it? Like, wait a minute. She'd been cheating with Chad for quite some time before mm-hmm. this. So, yeah. Hot meat kettle there. Um, there was kind of some uncertainty because, of course, Lori left and left JJ with Charles and disappeared for a couple of months. She went to Melanie Gibbs and then she went to Hawaii with Tylee. Um, it was also they did fig- you know find out that oh there uh, was some concern about Lori's mental health. Uh-huh. One of the things that's really interesting in here is that it outlines all of the uh, religious beliefs yeah, and how they're connected, which mm-hmm. I've never seen the police acknowledge any of that before. Not here. Not here. So, yeah, very interesting. So they talked about how Lori believes she was part of, you know, selected to prepare the 144,000 people for the end of the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Charles found that a little concerning and that he did petition for a mental health evaluation, which we know. And she was cleared on that. Clearly, they really didn't actually even speak to her. But mm-hmm. um, he also talked about how Lori had told him that he was possessed by a dark spirit, spirit named Ned Schneider. Why that name of all names? Right. Like some I know. guy named Ned Schneider is getting tagged in all this stuff. Like, <laughs> hey, what did I do? You know? I, I, yeah. Yeah. That one is, that's really a weird name to choose. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. I never understood that. And that Charles told the, had told the police at one point that Lori was, re- was referring to him as Ned. Yes. So there were a lot of things going on in this relationship. Mm-hmm. So... They've been watching, you know, court orders, police body cam footage, cell phone records, and witness testimony to kind of piece all this together. Mm -hmm. So then, because these guys were busy in 2019. Mm -hmm. Charles was killed in July. Then on October 3rd of 2019, um, the Chandler police learned about the attempted murder of Brenda Boudreau. Mm -hmm. So that happened on 10-2 of 2019 when he reported that someone had shot at him. Uh, he was arriving home and he was trying just about to step out of his car in front of his house in Gilbert, Arizona. The uh-huh. shot was fired from the back of a Jeep Wrangler that was parked down the street from his house. Yeah. And of course, you know, he said that he suspected that the shooter was Alex Cox. Uh-huh. And he also reported that Lori Vallow was to blame for his impending mm-hmm. divorce from his wife, yeah. Melanie Boudreau. Yeah. Who is niece, Lori's niece. Mm-hmm. So at this point, all, they just keep hearing Lori Vallow's name, you know? They, they do and just Alex keep hearing. Alex Cox's name. Yeah. Yes. And they keep hearing about these extreme religious beliefs about mm-hmm. that Lori and Vallow or that Lori and Alex have. And now they've drawn uh, Melanie into. Yeah. Yeah. So this is when, right after this, is while, you know, they're, they say they're continuing to investigate the murder of Charles Vallow even back then. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe they were. I don't know. But this is when Kay Woodcock, who is J.J. Vallow's grandma, contacts the uh, police there in, in Gilbert because, hey, we haven't been able to talk to him for months and she's not mm-hmm. allowing us and we're really worried. 
So that's when they figured out that Lori had moved and taken the children to Rexburg, Idaho with, guess who, Alex Cox. Here we go again with those names. Yeah. So, of course, the Rexburg PD then got involved and they went and did the welfare check on Tylee and JJ. Unfortunately, at this point, we didn't know it at the time, but they these kids were already dead. Yeah. So that's when uh, Lori indicated that JJ was staying with Melanie Gibb in Arizona. Yeah. And so they did contact Melanie and they eventually found out that that was not the case. And, you know, Lori had been telling people that JJ and Tylee went to stay with Jay, with uh, Kate Woodcock. Mm -hmm. Did they ever actually say that? I thought it was that Ty Tylee was at school. And JJ was with grandma or Melanie. I, yeah, I don't know if I ever heard that Tylee was. Yeah, me there. either. No. That's what this report says, but I kind of think that's incorrect. I, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, when they said that she was staying, that, that JJ was with Kay Woodcock, the police were like, well, we don't think that's true because that's who called us to say they were worried. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's when the police find out that guess who got married? Lori and Chad. Yeah. And, and then they discover how weird. Chad's wife just died in her sleep. Right? What a coinky dink, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're starting to put this picture together. I love this document mm -hmm. because it puts the whole picture together in a oh. way that I've never actually seen done. Like yeah. on paper, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because then they start talking about that. Uh, they have just, they discovered that Lori believed that Charles had to die in order for Chad and Lori to get married to fulfill their religious prophecy. Yes. This is what they're learning from all of their data, you yes. know, from their cell phones and emails and all of their digital data. This is what they're learning that yep. they believed that. Charles had to die so that they could fulfill their religious prophecy um, yeah. that that they made. You know? Yeah, yeah, the prophecy yeah. That, that they themselves who, who made. Who made the prophecy? There's still a big question there, a bigger question now. Yeah. Because as you will learn throughout this, was it Chad? Was it Zulima? Or was it Julie? Yes, there are because questions. Because the three of them were throwing around prophecy, besides yeah. Lori as well. So yeah. True. But this is the point at which Chandler Police, Gilbert Police, both mm -hmm. in Arizona, Rexburg Police, Fremont County, and the FBI started to coordinate their efforts. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, all these police departments were already working together to try to figure mm -hmm. out where these kids are and what in the actual hell is going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Yeah, at this point, they discover that Lori and Chad believe that they have extraordinary abilities. Uh -huh. Like they think that they have the power to teleport uh -huh. and cause harm to others. Uh -huh. That they can call up natural disasters. Uh -huh. Which remember, that was one um, of the they things also that they said about Zulima, is that she could cause earthquakes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that they could pray away demonic spirits attached to others and that they also had visionary capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And because of those capabilities, they had the, they were qualified to tell whether someone had a light or dark scale associated with them. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. How Chad Ugh. had all of his rankings of who's light and dark, and it's just so weirdly coincidental that people and that the are death percentages. Friends, yes, yeah, the death percentages. The people who are their, uh, you know, friends and cohorts are in the light, and people that they don't like are dark. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's all very coincidental. Mm -hmm. um, this is also when they learn that um, they're using the term zombie. Yes. For people. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, some people have become zombies. 
Mm -hmm. Let's see. So they wow. had attached dark scales to Brandon, mm -hmm. Charles, JJ, and Tylee. Mm -hmm. um, oh, heavens. I just clicked out of my document. Okay. Well, again, if you, they, they, they say, this makes me laugh, in the document it says, coincidentally, if you share their belief system, your score was favorable. If you offered yeah. any opposition to belief <laughs> of their destiny, you were seen as possessed. Yeah. Right. And isn't that interesting mm -hmm. that, you know, their own bias was definitely showing. Right. I was going to say, I think that's called confirmation bias. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it is. It's it's a big logic problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then they find the first evidence to cause harm to Charles Vallow. And this kills me how far back this was. Right. This was in a text message between Zulema Pestenis and Lori Vallow on 11 3 18. Yeah. This was like eight months before Charles was killed. Yeah. So yeah. we know that Zulema is a friend of Lori and also the widow of Alex Cox. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And when uh, Alex died, they snatched her cell phone. They saved they sure her cell did. phone. Remember, we've talked about this before, but when Alex died, within an hour of his death, she had lawyered up. Yes, she and had. And it was, that was really weird. Well, they actually seized her cell phone at that time. Yeah, which she wasn't expecting, I think, mm -hmm. based on what they found. You know, I have to say, because we've studied a lot of criminal behavior, and mm -hmm. these guys are the dumbest criminals ever, because all mm -hmm. of their crap is on their phones. Like, mm -hmm. they weren't even trying to hide what they were doing. No, because they truly believed that what they were doing was of God, and right? righteous, and justified, and that there was no they had nothing to hide. Kind of. I mean, they still fled to Hawaii, and but you know, they they didn't uh, behave like real criminals because they didn't think they were criminals. Right. They didn't actually try to hide their digital footprints at all. Mm -mm. No. So in November of 2018, uh, Zulema tells Lori that she was told by God that she is to protect her. Uh -huh. And then in January 2019. She told Lori that she had a vision that she could create storms and fire and will have the eye of the Lord. I don't really know what that looks like, but. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> she can see all, maybe. I don't yeah. know. So then in February 2019, Lori texts Zulema telling her that Charles was blocking her gifts. Ooh. Which is probably about the time he was like, look, I don't think any of this stuff is true and you're kind of mm -hmm. freaking me out, you know? Yeah. yeah. So then their conversation turned toward causing char harm to Charles, who they were also referring to as a dark spirit called Hiplos mm -hmm. or Ned. There appears to be two dark spirits. That Ned Schneider was the first one. Yeah. And they did all of this work yeah, uh, behind uh, Charles's back in the temple and you know, whatever scurrying around business they were doing and got rid of Ned. And that was, I think, when Charles decided to not divorce Lori. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, when things flared up again, then he was possessed by a demon called Hiplos. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I mean, their, their choice of names, very broad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now then there's we a whole... searched Hiplos. We did. Because, you know, I mean, Ned Schneider, what the fuck? But Hiplos made me wonder if that could potentially be a Book of Mormon character or, you know, somebody from other kind of, uh, you know, some other thing they're coming up with. I couldn't find anything, anything no. at all. So we think it's probably just yet another term they came up with, you know. I guess, yeah. I wondered if it was like a, a god from Greek mythology or Roman mythology or something, but no. Yeah. And then there's like almost a whole page that is redacted. Yeah. That is probably some more conversations about harming Charles, but that's probably evidence, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. assuming. So then, you know, Lori took off for a while. 
So then she's coming back to Texas. This is in June of 2019. Uh And she texts Zulema, just got home and got JJ JJ to sleep. Let's go spiritually tonight and work on him. We give the timing to the Lord, but we don't need to relent. This is war. So if they're working on him to try to get Hiplos out of him, or if they're working on him to try to kill him, I'm not totally clear on that. Yeah, I think they maybe were trying to kill him. Yeah, and that uh, their spiritual tactics eventually um, didn't work, and they moved on to weaponry. Yeah, I guess they did. Um, on six nineteen of twenty nineteen, so this is about a, you know, a little less than a month before uh, Alex shoots Charles. Zulema texts Lori. Oh, and can you meet me at the temple in the morning? I have time tomorrow and we can work on Hiplos. Yeah. So they were going into the Mormon temple. So you have to understand if, you know, and you guys that aren't, don't have any history with Mormon uh, culture or the you know, LDS religion, you don't understand. But yeah. to go into the temple, you have to have a temple recommend. Yeah. And that is a piece of paper that's been signed by your bishop and state president or branch president, wherever you live, that says that you are worthy, according to their standards, Mm -hmm. to attend the temple, which means that you are paying 10% of your income to the church in tithing, that you are wearing your temple garments, the uh, Mormon underwear you've all probably heard of before, Mm -hmm. that you are following all of the other rules of the church um and that would mean including not having affairs um looking at you Lori yeah. but uh, also there's not a lot of time and space in the temple to just freestyle and do your own thing right. I'm really confused about where they must have been now I'm sure there's to be fair I went to the temple twice I got married there I got sealed there And I went back for one thing. So I'm not an expert in uh, temple ceremony at all, uh, at all. But I do know that when I was there, it wasn't like there's just free and open space for you to just chill out and do energy work. Like, I can't imagine where these two were and exactly how they were making this happen. But uh, they were super violating the rules. Like women are not allowed to do that kind of work in Mormonism. That's a... Yeah. That's an only a priest hold, priest, priesthood holder thing, not to mm-hmm. mention that Lori is currently considered an adulteress uh, right. in this situation. So, yeah, it's well, super. Sure, but, but obviously weird. she had a temple recommend or she wouldn't have been going into the temple. Right. So yeah. uh, it, it's all really curious, you know, unless unless they were just going to the grounds of the temple because uh, people do that. LDS people do that quite a bit for peace and for a place to you know, to, to pray or just to, you know, feel good. So I was thinking about that thinking I it's possible, but I think unlikely I'm suspecting mm-hmm. they really were using those temple recommends and going into sacred places to do their, uh, their, you know, spinoff of uh, spirituality. It, it is really curious. It is. It's not at all what most people would consider what you do in a Mormon temple. So. Well, no, I would think most LDS people would be so horrified. They know? would. Yeah. 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 So this was all really weird. So then they discover that Lori around this time, this was a, on 621 of 2019, Lori was using a, she was looking up some stuff on social security disability applications on the social security website. And by filling out a particular form, she could get a benefits evaluation that would tell her if Charles were to die, how much money would she get Uh for the care of the kids? Um, This is pretty important because it's not something that you would just magically know or already know like yeah and it's 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 significant because a week after charles was murdered she messaged this to uh chad daybell so i talked to the insurance company he changed it in march this is referring to charles's um life Life insurance. insurance 
uh, he, so it was probably Ned before we got rid of him, mm -hmm. indicating that Ned had changed the insurance. Yeah. Um, and we know that was changed to Kate Woodcock. They can't tell me to who, of course, but it's done. I'll yeah. still get the 4000 a month from Social Security. So before Charles died, mm -hmm. she was poking around on the Social Security website and got that um, benefits, did that benefits inquiry to just find out how much money she would be getting mm -hmm. if he were to die. Yeah. And and there really isn't a way for her to have known that. Like, it's, it's one other reason that... Um, Chandler police really see this as, mm -hmm. you know, premeditation. Absolutely. Yeah. So then in, on June 22nd, they bring Alex Cox into the conversation regarding Hiplos or Charles. And yeah. so he was texting, Alex was texting Zulema from a certain number that they figured out did belong to Alex. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's kind of involved in the conversation now. And then there's a message from Zulema to Lori, and this is on uh, June 27th. Do you think there is a way to change Hiplos to the light? Yeah. There's no, it doesn't show us the answer. Right. There's quite a few like portions of text we get to see with questions, but without the follow-up. So that'll be interesting to see down the road. Yeah. What do those questions were? Right, yeah. It's, I mean, obviously, I'm pretty sure the answer to that from Lori was no, but, yeah. you know, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So then on 629, this is when Charles discovers the email that Lori had used his email address to send to Chad, and it was a letter... Um, inviting him to come to Arizona to help him with writing a book. Yeah. And that had been like a cover for Chad's wife, mm -hmm. Tammy, so that he could come and visit Lori. Um, so Charles, of course, confronts Lori about that. He's super upset about it. Mm-hmm. And he asks Lori to come clean about what is her relationship to Chad Daybell. Yeah. And that if she didn't, he was contacting Tammy Daybell, mm -hmm. Chad's wife, to tell her what he knows. Mm -hmm. This is really important. Yeah. Because yeah, that's this, on 629. Yeah. So like two weeks before he was killed. Mm -hmm. So... It was also about this time that Charles started talking to Adam Cox, uh, who is Lori's brother, about the, what had happened with this email, plus about Lori's radical beliefs and mm -hmm. how worried he was about this whole yeah. thing. And so they started planning an intervention yeah. around the 10th of July. So yeah. Charles was, was arranging to come to Arizona. Um, and he had also arranged travel for Adam to come to Arizona. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, Zulema and Lori and Chad are still talking about Hiplos. And then there's a whole bunch of redacted stuff we don't get to know, mm -hmm. which is a bummer. They, yeah. they do say that they don't find any communication that directly links Chad Daybell to the planning of Charles's murder. Mm -hmm. So they cannot charge him. Yeah. But what does happen is that Lori's mother and her sister, Summer Shiflett, mm -hmm. uh, basically um, spill the beans that Lori, yeah. that these guys are coming to do this intervention. Yeah. Now, isn't that interesting? Which I find really interesting because mm -hmm. they, in their interviews, have acted like they didn't know a damn thing about any of this. Mm -hmm. And yet Lawyers. they were protecting Lori from it, from an intervention about it, which really makes me have to wonder, were they also drinking her Kool-Aid? Were they buying her hype? 
Because right. why were they protecting her why like were this? They? Why weren't they listening I know. to their son and brother, Adam, and going, we should be concerned about her. This is really not good. Why? Yeah. Why did they do that? Yeah. Did they not like Charles? And so they didn't, you know, they didn't want to buy into this. I don't know, but it's very strange that mm -hmm. they would do that. So she finds out, Lori finds out on July 9th, two days before the murder. Mm -hmm. So she reaches out to Alex Cox, Melanie Boudreaux, and Summer Shiflet to warn them about this plan. Mm -hmm. So then on 710, Adam and his son Zach are picked up at the airport by Adam's mother. She's yeah. playing both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Summer is also lurking around and she's providing Lori with updates. Yeah. Regarding their whereabouts. Ask Lori if she wants the, her to run interference. Yeah. Lori tells Summer that she's trying to get it figured out and that, uh, yeah, to just keep running interference, letting her know what their plans are and what they're doing. Yeah. So Summer is literally lurking around the house, around with her mother, you know, with her family members and listening to what they're saying and sending it over to Lori. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yikes. So throughout this time, Lori is messaging Charles and not letting on that she knows anything. Mm -hmm. So then apparently she asked her niece, Melanie, to cancel a trip she had to Utah for a wedding telling her that you just, you can't go at all. We need to stay here to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. Lori also said it's coming to a head. This week will change everything. Yeah. 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 This, this Interesting part, too. Mm -hmm. They were trying to, based on the text messages, they were trying to keep Adam and Alex away from each other. Yes. So that they could come up with a plan. Why? Why? Did they think I know. that Adam would be able to convince Alex that this was some bad news? I mean, why didn't they want Alex to have anything to do with Adam at that time? That's pretty interesting, I think. It is. It's very interesting. If, and it's you know. not Alex that was protecting her. You know, right. early in all of this, we were like, well, Adam or Alex was Lori's protector. Not until later, it seems yeah. as though really she had her sister and her mother protecting her. She mm -hmm. had Zulima who was called from God to protect her. Right. Well, Lori needed lots of protectors. Yeah. Well, and then she says this to Alex. I don't know what this means exactly. Getting sleepy. So I'm going to need you to stay close to me the next couple days. Mel too. She can't go to Utah. They are planning some kind of intervention but want Mel out of the way so I'm left alone. I need to come get my stuff at your house tomorrow and secure it. Lots to do. Thanks for standing by me. It's all coming to a head this week. I will be like Nephi, I am told, and so will you. Mm -hmm. Nephi being the uh, triumphant, uh, obedient hero of the Book of Mormon. Right, who killed the evil Laban who was getting in the way mm -hmm. of the work. Yeah. It's yeah. creepy how they have used scripture, mm -hmm. Mormon scripture and biblical stuff mm -hmm. to justify their choices and the things that they've done. Yeah. So then we outline the actual day that Charles is killed. And there are some real bombshells in this. Yes. So on 7 11, 2019, Charles arrives at Lori's house at 7 35 in the morning to pick up JJ. When he got there, he texted Adam Cox, telling him that Alex was there. Adam told Charles that they were planning something, and Charles said, Absolutely. Adam indicated that he was supposed to spend the night with Alex, 
but Lori probably blocked this. So they already know something's up to some mm -hmm. extent. Mm -hmm. So here's some weird stuff about the timing of all of it. Following the murder of Charles Vallow, Lori took his rental vehicle and cellular phone. Remember she took his phone? Yeah. The GPS data associated with the phone indicated that the phone left the residence at 749. Lori then went to Burger King to get food for JJ and Walgreens to get flip-flops for her and Tylee and finally returned home at 848. Mm -hmm. So Alex didn't call 911 until 832. Yeah. But Lori left at 749. Yeah. So he calls to report the shooting at 832. So when he reporting the incident, Alex says it just happened, but it clearly didn't. Mm -hmm. He also was given CPR instructions and he pretended like he was performing life-saving measures on Charles. Mm -hmm. But once the emergency people got there, they discovered that that wasn't true at all. Yeah. Because he was laying face down. They couldn't even see any blood until they flipped him over. So he had not been moved. Yeah. Which indicates that Alex did not perform any emergency aid. No. No. So based on the timeline, Charles would have most likely laid dead or dying for approximately 43 minutes yeah. before Alex called 911. Yeah. And during that time, Alex called Lori. Yeah. There's a big surprise. Yeah. So Lori, Tylee, and Alex, as we know, they tell the investigators about this physical altercation that was supposedly started by Charles, which we know this is a whole fabrication. Yeah. So they say during the altercation, Lori left the residence with Tylee and JJ. And mm -hmm. that as they were leaving, Tylee and Lori reported hearing a gunshot. Yeah. Um based on this investigation it has been proven how valuable that Alex Cox was to Lori. His mission on this earth was to protect his sister. I'd love that they're adding in the parts about all of this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the shot into Charles' body is he laid on the floor and the delay in calling 911 would also validate their desire for him to die. So you don't shoot somebody who's laying on the floor if you're shooting for self-defense. Yeah. Uh, they did, Lori also did tell the police that Alex was asked to stay at her house to protect her from Charles when he arrived. Alex said that wasn't true and that he stayed at the house because they were going to go to a water park or go shooting on 7-Eleven. Why would you say that? Right? I know. I'm like, okay, if you're going to lie about this, why would you say that? Not smart. Well, Alex doesn't strike as super smart, you he know? doesn't. It is and true. And here in these periods where they're, like, trying to spoof around him and keep him from seeing his brother and, you know, there he's also yeah. being, he's a pawn that's being played in the game, too. He just doesn't realize it. Yeah. They don't totally trust him. No, they clearly don't. And this, that is a, that's something new. That's an indication of something that we hadn't really seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which again, makes you really wonder how he died. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Alex shot Charles twice in the chest. And the trajectory at autopsy found that one of those shots was consistent with his statement. And that that shot would have gone through Charles and ended up in the baseboard. But the second shot entered Charles' rib cage and exited through his upper, upper left shoulder, which caused this kind of wound and a defect in the flooring, like the, it hit the floor when it came out. And this angle indicates that Charles was already laying on the floor when the second shot was fired. Yeah. So he shot him again when he was down. Yeah. That's not and something. left him to suffer on the floor for who knows how long. 
yeah, at least 43 minutes. Yeah. So, you know, they're, you know, they have a lot of information that indicates that the murder was intentional and according to a master plan. One of these was a message sent to Lori from Chad Daybell. The message read, I got the inspiration to go back to my original death percentages that helped us track Charles, Ned, etc. Tammy is very close. Her percentage has fallen steadily since Hiplos left. It is encouraging. Heart and kissy lips. Gross. Because this is in July, right? Yeah. And they don't kill Tammy till October. Yeah. Yeah, so um, some other things that came up that indicated that this was intentional. Zulema texts Lori as I was working on Hiplos today in the temple. I was told he will be taken as he is. I don't know what that means. Then I was shown to only put light, the brightest light from the top and bottom at the same time meeting in the middle. So I've been doing that all day. Yeah. Um... Then, then Zulema, on, oh what? Yeah. Oh, then on seven twelve, yeah. she uh, text Zulema, text Melanie Gibb to say Hiplos is gone. It was mm -hmm. a Nephi and Laban ending. I will tell yeah. you more when I see you in person, or when you see Lori in person. I'm leaving for Chile on Monday for two weeks. Remember Nephi and Laban. Laban was getting in the way. Yeah. Of the good work. That Nephi was trying to accomplish and he had to kill him in righteousness. Yes. It was basically he had permission from God kind of. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's in the Book of Mormon in case you're wondering what text we keep referring to. That's in the Book of Mormon. This is mm -hmm. in the very first part of the Book of Mormon like Nephi 1 chapters like 4 or 3 or 4. This yeah. is really early on. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Crazy. Mm hmm And then on 712, she also texts Julie. We've not heard Julie's name before. We believe this is Julie Rowe, but mm -hmm. we don't know that for certain, but that's our belief. Yeah. So uh, Julie, who was another friend of theirs, and uh, she teaches her brand of energy work and stuff like that. She's tried to do some interviews. She's tried to be a little more prolific in the news. I think most uh, people haven't taken her very seriously, but you may have seen her pop up in this case before. Yeah. So Zulima texts her and says, right. I'm not sure what right was about, mm -hmm. but she, you know, is a part of the conversation at any rate. Well, then they say, she says, I'm just happy it's over. Yes. I'm just happy it's over. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Now, this was interesting. Uh, through interviews conducted with Melanie Gibb and Zulema Pastenas, the belief system regarding dark spirits and zombies was revealed. So that's where they found that out, uh -huh. is talking to those two. We knew Melanie Gibb, but we didn't know, because Zulema uh, lawyered up so early, we have not known what Zulema said, what she knew at all. Well, she's been silent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So. Right. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's one of the things that was reported by Lori is that when she found out that Lori and Charles were coming to town, she believed they were going to kill her for her life insurance money. Uh, again, pot, meat, kettle. Mm -hmm. But that's what she told some people. Yeah. 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 Well, and don't forget, she told the police that. Yes. When Lori was initially searched, uh, you know, when they came to do that welfare search for, on JJ, way back when, you know, uh, at the beginning of all of this uh, in Rexburg, she told the police then that she had to move to Rexburg because her brother Adam was trying to kill her. Right, right, yeah. So she was trying to spin that yarn. Mm -hmm. Trying to spin the Charles was um, 
uh, unfaithful and they, mm-hmm. they're going to kill me. Like, oh my gosh, lady. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no self-awareness here at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, Melanie Gibb and Zulian Ma have both included that Lori got her advice and direction from Chad Daybell. Uh-huh. So when giving instructions, Zulema stated Lori would always say, I have been told. And that meant Chad Daybell told her. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that there were messages that indicated that Chad did know um, about the zombie stuff and that the work that Zulema and Lori were trying to do on Charles. Uh-huh. So the final statement in this uh, document is, based on the above synopsis and a myriad of other facts gathered in this case, it is recommended that Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell be charged with conspiracy to commit murder for the death of her husband, Charles Vallow. Yeah. We have only seen Lori actually charged. Yeah, thus far, that hasn't actually happened. Only Lori, but... Yeah. But the day is young. Who knows? Right. I mean, obviously, there's so much work going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Yeah. Um, but boy, there were some bombshells here. A lot more about who the players are that we mm-hmm. have guessed at but not been sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the timeline of the day that Charles was killed is very interesting mm-hmm. and sad. Yeah. I mean, Lori left as Charles was bleeding out on the floor and she went to mm-hmm. Burger King. And Walgreens. Yeah, for flip flops. Yeah. You know, for their pool party, I'm sure. For their pool party. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It just, I mean, the the heartless, cold heartedness of the whole damn thing just blows me away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's awful. It is. But now we see how law enforcement is connecting these yeah. cases, including yeah. the shooting of the attempted shooting at Brandon Madreau. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I think it's just kind of a charges roulette, you know, to see who gets charged next with what. Right. Exactly. Because it's coming. It's definitely coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, right now, if you're Melanie or Melanie... Or Zulima. You or be maybe Julie. They also mentioned Sean Little there in this uh, document as well. You or Summer, frankly, at this point, you better be pretty worried about what's happening, you know. Right. But we know that Zulima, at least according to the prosecutor in Madison, that Rob Wood, Zulima has at least some kind of an agreement. She has a, a, a use agreement. A plea deal, basically. Uh, we don't know about everybody else. So that is yet yeah. to be shown as well. Yeah, if some of them are going to get to plead to something uh, less severe in for their willingness to cooperate. Mm-hmm. We don't know, you guys, but this case just keeps on rolling out more and more and more crazy. Mm-hmm. 100%. <clears throat> Yeah, so there you go. Right. So that's a lot to chew on, isn't it? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I've read through it several times and I'm still like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. you know, the the, the ongoing battle between people that believe that this was really all just based on lust and life insurance and that's all. And then you have people that believe, no, 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 they really did believe in this stuff. I think it's pretty clear to say at this point that you can see it both ways right. they both both of those things were happening here they don't have to be exclusive to one another they did mm-hmm. want the life insurance money you guys got to realize mm-hmm. Lori had been living high on the hog with charles yes he made really good money he took super good care of her she lived in a beautiful home drove yeah. gorgeous cars pretty much just did whatever the hell she wanted and if they were going to kill him that was all going to go away so yeah. she had to make sure she was still going to be taken care of, yeah. you know? And so that's, that's where a lot of this was born in mm-hmm. her. 
if Joe Ryan didn't have life insurance, we don't know about that for sure. Yeah. We're not sure. We think she got some money when Tylee died from Joe or what? Sorry. Mm -hmm. When Joe died for Tylee for Tylee. Um, and so maybe that's where the first ideas of life insurance were really planted. But at any rate, um, I think at this point, the ar argument over both of those things should be put to rest and go, it was both. Yeah. They really did believe their height. At least some of them did. They really did believe what they were doing in some way, at least was justified. I think a lot of their behavior really indicates that. Yeah. But they also had one foot in the left brain world, you know, mm -hmm. where they were looking they, at things like life insurance and yeah. Social security uh -huh. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. One other interesting thing, um, when Sh Summer had said initially that she asked Alex to go over there if Charles was going to be there to keep Lori safe. Summer has always claimed that she's the one that sent Alex. That was her fault. And she says that she saw threatening text messages from Chad to Lori that made her worry Charles. for Lori and Tylee's safety. Yeah. Who do you think sent those? Uh, Lori. When you put a number in your phone, you could easily say Charles and then have anyone text you right. some shit. And then you could say, look, see, he's texting me right now saying these terrible things. And so again, probably. somebody probably fell for something there. That's mm -hmm. the only justification that Summer really had, you know, is yeah. that, well, I was involved because I sent Alex over there. And, but now can we believe anything? We didn't actually believe anything Summer said in the first place. But now we know Summer was running interference. Summer was passing the information on to Lori. So what do we know about Summer except for that she was involved in some way? Yeah, that she was. Mm -hmm. That she was helping Lori. That she definitely knew more than she said. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Well, yeah. and her mother too. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, yeah. It should probably be some kind of bingo or drinking game or something. But yeah. to see who gets charged next and with what and how many heads actually roll. Right. And, you know, there was also an interview with Charles' brother. Yes. Uh, Gary Vello. And if you can believe this, his wife's name is Melanie. That's yeah. three freaking Melanies in this situation. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this was the first time any of Charles' relatives had come forward. Mm -hmm. And he, you well, know, was really. Kay. But yeah, mm -hmm. except for Kay. Yes, Kay. But I mean, like sibling, yeah. you know, other siblings, mm -hmm. anybody Kay, else yeah. had not said anything. Yeah. And he just talked about how devastated he was. Because see, Charles was coming to Houston, Texas to work a lot. Mm -hmm. And when he was there, he was staying with his brother and sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. They only knew a little bit about what was going on with Lori. He did not reveal a lot of it to them. Mm -hmm. But the thing that Gary said is he was willing to do anything to help for it to work out because he was crazy in love with Lori. Mm -hmm. Like no matter what crazy crap she did, and they knew about the stuff where she stole his money and she took his truck and she canceled his flight and all that stuff. And he said it just didn't matter because Charles was crazy about her mm -hmm. and that he would have done anything to make their relationship work. Yeah. Just so sad because this whole time he's trying to make their relationship work yeah. and she's plotting his murder. Yeah. Whew. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, this is our first case of the week. It is Monday. You might be able to tell me that we recorded this on the 4th of July because you can really hear some fireworks in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. So you want to keep an eye out for two more cases coming up this week, as well as we will be back for our live streams on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific for case updates and Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific for the uh, Psychic Hour. Yeah. I will say, oh, shouldn't we say also, last week we were supposed to live stream a hearing with Mark Means. Yes. That got vacated. The hearing didn't even happen. Yeah. So we, we, were missing, we were missing the live stream and then the live stream didn't even happen. So don't worry. The live stream we was will, Yeah. 
it'll yep. it'll come up again sometime and we will live stream it for sure yep well you know it we are true crime paranormal with the psychic sisters thanks for joining us have a great day take care Thank you.